Hey everyone, Arthur Fantastic here, and today we are going to discuss why Torah matters, biblical roles. See, the problem today about a lot of relationships and their failings is it's it's not because they've found the new progressive ideal that's now the pinnacle of relationships. No, it's because they've actually fallen away from the traditional values in the Word of God, which is the basic undergirding of Western society. Now, even depending on what time period you're trying to appeal to, you even those time periods may have misconstrued the quote, truth because of their social norms and what they allowed and what they expect. So even then, we have to discern for ourselves from the word, not from man-made traditions or um, golden ages that we like to appeal to. We have to appeal to the word. So we're going to talk a lot about the New Testament. Okay, uh, The majority of people that we're discussing or trying to reach are so-called Christians that have um, moved away from the Torah, obviously. We're going to discuss a lot of New Testament. And obviously the New Testament authors are all appealing to and quoting from the Torah. The, the underlying foundation of everything that we're they're saying in the New Testament is from the Old Testament. Finally, I've also got two videos that I'm going to be splicing into this video because it's very, very relevant to the topic. Um, and it really, in a shorter amount of time than I could in all my rants, um, distill certain points that I will then expound upon after I splice them in. So let's get into this. In a lot of the modern talk shows that we see on YouTube, going all the way back to sex talk and um i forget that doctor that therapist names back in the day and mtv and then and then later vh1 there is they even had shows war of the sexes and they had um what was that show where you could it was like a dating show but it was like you were in a chair not have to go look it up man i'm just dating myself here love line it's not sex talk. It's the same thing. That's what they were talking about. Sex talk, love line. I guess I guess that's how I put it in my head. Maybe sex talk was something on another channel. Anyway, uh, that's was with Drew, Dr. Drew Pinsky or something like that. Uh, he still has got a show on at like VH1 and stuff with like ad addicts and stuff. And then um, Singled Out. Do you ever watch that, babe? Singled Out. You were on the chair. You're in a dating show. You were asking people questions and like um it was sort of like a guess who except like you see people in the crowd and you're like this and then the people that are that they go they go they leave you know what i mean then you get you get you single out like one person or maybe there might be a couple you might choose from anyway <laughs> um the whole point of referencing this and going down that memory lane is in the modern era of my dating, right, almost always it's been geared toward women. You know what I mean? It's been geared toward, like, oh, my gosh. What was that blind date show back on the uh, back in the day, like in the 70s? A a like, Arnold Schwarzenegger was on it? They would ask questions. Oh, my gosh. It was called The Dating Game. How, how simplistic could you... I mean, there's nothing else like that at the time. So, But even all the way, going back then, thinking about dating in this era is all effeminate. It's all geared toward, like, impressing women. You know what I mean? Getting them to feel like this um, little tingle between her legs and have her be this... Oh, he's someone I can obsess about. You know what I'm saying? He's 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 the and even in the idea of dating games and everything, it's just a microcosm which represents hypergamy. You know what I mean? That women have more options, um, and it's always the woman that has more options. Very few times is it the other way around. 
Um, and uh, even when it is, it's not indicative of how the entire sexual market is. It's like when a guy is up there in the singled out chair or the dating game, it's absolutely different. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, then he's still there's still a level of he needs to impress the women uh, as opposed to the women really need to impress the guy. And if it's if it, that's if that, that was the way around. But most of the time it isn't because society is built in a way that it's the guy that needs to impress the woman and that's fine that's how it should be the man should be able to demonstrate competence and the ability to provide take care of her and 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 his um morality his ethics these things should reflect that of a good man which of course on this channel when we talk about good that's defined by god's law God is good. His law is good um, and righteous and holy. Uh, Romans 7, 12 and 14. It's spirit law. God's law is also spiritual. Um, and it defines what sin is. 1 John 3, 4. So when we're talking about a good man, as opposed to what society may say a good man is, um, we also need to delineate that. But modern dating which is also a modern convention that doesn't exist until like after 1955 1945 um before that dating if you took a, a woman to a hotel or across state lines that you weren't married to you could be taken in for sexual trafficking and guess what they had less sexual trafficking back then needless to say this was uh, a way to combat um uh, sex out of wedlock, uh, prostitution, um, and a, 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 a number of things that could lead to um, just sexual immorality. It was a more, you know, it was a, a more traditional time. But then again, the boot of the law was also on people's necks at the same time. And um, But uh, when you look back at that time, things were more cohesive. Is that something that we need to appeal to? Not necessarily, but we can look at it and say, okay, what did they do right? Because if we start saying everything that they were doing was right, then we start getting we start getting into a problem where we're appealing to men's standards instead of God's standards. As in previous videos that I would have posted before posting this one though, um, I have them like up uploaded, but I haven't had them posted yet. And I'm going to start releasing things over time consistently. Um, and this will probably come after that. Um, in other videos, we see women saying that they're, they expect, um, read that as they think that they're entitled to um, a man's money, a man paying, a man doing X, Y, Z for, um, in terms of financial taking okay and this becomes a transactional relationship that's also what making modern dating has done it has it, it made it effeminate and in, in an effeminate way it's become transactional see men are they value loyalty honesty they honor duty even psychopaths even psychopaths, not sociopaths. Psychopaths work within systems, okay? One in 25 people are psychopaths, okay? So they they are willing to um, uh, follow the rules, okay? As long as they believe in the rules. Now, if that's the case, what do we take from all that? What we can take from that is that despite men wanting a certain thing, it is not at all discussed in the modern discussion of uh, relationships and two people coming together. It's always one way. It's toward the woman. There's no discussion of loyalty and honesty and um, you know, uh, it, it, you know, those things are just expected. But there's no discussion. And, and there's having to show it. I mean, that's even more uh, absurd. Uh, 
I think that there's a creator on uh, IG, and this is the first video that I'm going to segue into. He does a great job of summing this all up in a uh, succinct few minutes. So we'll listen to that real quick, and then we'll come back and discuss more. If he won't, find someone who will. Like, if he won't open your door for you, find someone who will. Simple, right? My brother just asked me, does that work for guys, too? I was like, of course. So he's like, so if she doesn't cook for me, find someone who will. If she won't do my laundry for me, then find a girl that will. Mm. Why does it sound so bad when men say it? It sounds bad because our society and culture are in a fallen state, and our media has everybody brainwashed into believing that life is about what I want, who owes it to me, and how I get it from them, but not about what I should be providing to others. This is my depiction of a transactional relationship. This is one thing she wants from him, one thing he wants from her, and if you stop there, it's just a negotiation. How much do I have to give to get? More mature relationships are focused on what I can provide. What is it that makes me a quality partner? That's why these conversations about the table are so stupid. Uh, women will say, I am the table, as if he has no needs at all. That's what these princess treatment relationships are. It's just simping with no reciprocation, and it ends when you can't keep it up anymore. So when you say, Why does it sound so bad when men say it? It is because you are experiencing a demand instead of an offer of support. And that is how the internet pulls consciousness downwards. You might be a unique individual who recognizes multiple valid perspectives, but when you're flipping through TikTok, you're being programmed to be egocentric, self-interested, and self-protective and to see others mainly as a means to an end. We still need to get our needs met. It's just so annoying to hear you all talk about it. I want this, and I want this, and I want that. Where's the part that would make us want to give it? I'll give you an example. I would love somebody to do chores for me. I just don't list it as a primary requirement. I say that I'm looking for someone who is excited about who I am as a person, so we can both help each other live fuller, more satisfying lives. And that would have to include someone doing the laundry, so there's no reason to mention it. It's a question of language and mentality. Everyone's talking about the results they want, but not about what they're going to do in order to deserve them. If you don't like your situation, you need to figure out why it's like that, and then rethink a few things, and then change how you show up and what you do, or who you hang out with, and see if you get better results. But instead, people just like to list off their demands on TikTok and offer nothing. It's social degradation. Don't do it. Once again, that was Homath on Instagram. I'm not sure if he has a TikTok, but great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, we're going to discuss each of those parts. We're first, we're going to discuss um, some things here relating to the Bible. When women are discussing over and over again, I, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this but have no idea what they bring to the table and indeed many times in modern relationships they bring nothing what the issue then becomes is well what am i getting for what i'm paying for and as he noted that is completely transactional the entire system is transactional today uh, and though there is some transactional things that uh, occur in a marriage like you're, you're supposed to be doing your duty in a mar marriage in terms of providing something and um, there may be things that your spouse asks of you surely but that isn't the sum total of what a relationship is and when done in the correct manner love isn't transactional you do things because you love them it's not because you um feel like oh i owe them though you do in some sense and manner that isn't the main purpose of where your love comes from it's honor duty um appreciation gratitude um presentness knowing that there is little time for what we have and the times that we have had with the people that we have been with are literally priceless and irreplaceable 
and there's no erasing it. There's no going back. And so going forward, any moment forward is a permanent moment in time. The end. There's no time travel. Don't let people fucking fool you with the movies that you can go back and fix your mistakes. It's going forward purposefully into being present and being purposeful with how we act not just kind of just lazy uh, lackadaisical when the way we just throw around uh the way that we act do think what we consume what we surround ourselves with okay so when we discuss what the bible uh discusses with uh women we can go to proverbs 31 for instance so Proverbs 31, starting in verse 10, we're going to read uh, all the way down to the end of the chapter. Um, there's a subsection title. It says the virtues of a noble woman. So um, this is what it says about what a woman needs to be to be ready to be a wife and what a wife is. Uh, a wife of noble character who who can find okay so it's it's a proverb so it's a little bit poetic she is far more precious than rubies the heart of her husband trusts in her and he lacks nothing in value she brings him good and not harms all the days of her life she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands so she's working she is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. Dang, she got some, all the finest herbs and spices. She rises while it is still night to provide food for her household and portions for her maidservants. She appraises a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She, she's, she's industrious. and She girds herself with strength and shows that her arms are strong. She's physically strong <laughs> all right um she sees that her gain is good and her lamp is not extinguished at night she stretches out her hands to the the, the distaff and grasps the spindle with her thin fingers she's working herself she opens her arms to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy she helps she's generous when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for they are all clothed in scarlet. That's red. Dang. She makes coverings of her bed. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the city gate, where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. This is like a dream. This person is, is, is I mean, I don't know. If this is not appealing to you, that might be a problem. You might have a problem. Um okay uh she delivers sashes to them she makes linen garments and sells them Oof. she s delivers sashes to the merchants strength and honor are her clothing and she can laugh at the days to come she opens her mouth with wisdom and faithful instruction is her on her tongue she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her as well. Many daughters have done noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeing, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her at the gates. Dang. That's what it says a woman should be like, what a good wife is doing. She's working. She's not looking to be idle. She's finding ways to make money for her family she's physically strong she's not weak she's lifting things she's putting them back down <laughs> she's lifting them again and putting them back down repeatedly until she has achieved um uh at, not at, atrophy um hypertrophy and grows muscles you know what i mean that doesn't happen by accident okay um she raises her hand and shows the strength of her arm. She's literally flexing in, in this proverb. That's amazing. Um, so you have all these things. Um, what else does she do? She's 
She has honor and strength. Honor, strength. The husband can trust her. He can trust her. He doesn't have to question. He doesn't, he doesn't have to repeatedly say, oh, I don't like this. Oh, why don't you trust me? Why don't you trust me? Isn't the response of uh, of how that works. You know what I mean? Why are you doing things that would that are making me feel uncomfortable over and over again? These things are often discussed in modern relationships, but the, like I said, the often the oft response is, uh, why, "Why don't you trust me? You're just supposed to trust. If you love me, you trust me." Um, and that's part in part women see can't see outside themselves many times where they're like, the way I love and trust you is the way that you're supposed to love and trust me. Um, and it's once again, really ingrained into the modern understanding of the biblical roles, not only of um, women, but of men and how like you're supposed to be want to be married. You're not supposed to want to have sex outside of marriage, test it out a couple times, live with a person. In fact, living with a person before marriage is a key indicator of people getting divorced. Okay, you don't get to test out. Once you move in, you're that should be that's married. I mean, you're having sex that should be married. If if people know you're having sex, like two or three witnesses catches you and you're having sex outside of marriage, you're married now. That's the punishment. It's not like oh, we're gonna talk about whether you're married or not. At most, the father may say no, and he may demand a bride price because he's owed a bride price. Um, because you've also dishonored him, you've taken out from his household. You, there's also probably all the problems that go around, the the numerous things of uh, getting a marriage together and stuff like that. But needless to say, needless to say, uh, the whole issue of biblical roles extends, and is not only covered in the Old Testament, where you know we talk about we can talk and I've discussed on the channel the authority of the husband over the wife. Uh, many times, it's even in the law in terms of when a man marries a woman, he can nullify uh, contracts and, and or covenants, if you will, that were made before he was present, if he, or he wasn't present. He, that's that's one of his uh, reserved rights is to be like, oh no, I wasn't there. No, we're done. This is nullified. I'm her husband now. I'm her covering. Okay. We can discuss how the covering of the father is transferred to the husband when the marriage is. And this is where we're discussing in uh, Genesis, where a man will cling to his wife. Um, this is discussing the new family that is being created in uh, the marriage of covenant of a woman, man and a woman. So when we look at the old testament it's pretty clear that the man has authority they're they're the man's always in the lead in the old testament there's no female leaders no one in fact people will say oh well deborah was a was a judge she she sang and spoke about the law under a tree and she was sent to tell barack the um he's who was also i guess considered a judge i'm not sure if he's considered a judge or um, he was a, he was a soldier to lead the armies of Israel against. But guess what? He was like, you have to come. Okay, there's no Esther doesn't lead. Ruth doesn't lead. No one's leading. There's no female leaders. The only women that lead that lead their husbands end up calling for the death of another man, whether it be um, John the Baptist or Jezebel. Um, Things like this were the cause. Uh, oh, um, of course, the fruit in the garden. The woman leads the man. The man says, okay. And he knows what will happen when he eats the fruit. He's not dumb. He was there when he, the, the garden. He was there first. He was there when things were being created. Um, he does it because he loves Eve. And he, you know what I mean? So he'll, it, it, it's, uh, the entire Bible is, is a romance story. Um, in part, you know, what I mean, there's a lot of things going down o overlapping. So when we go from the Old Testament, we go to the New Testament, we have first Corinthians seven, and we talk about, um, the duties of marriage. Okay. Which is our explicitly sexual, which is a reference to, uh, Exodus 21, 10. 
Um, I'll read the Berean Exodus 21 10. If, if he takes another wife, he must not reduce the clothes, the food, clothing, or marital rights of the first wife. Um, other, other translations like the new living translation will translate marital rights as sexual intimacy. Um, new American standard Bible conjugal rights. Um, uh, let's see here. I, I've, I've seen one where it just says sex. Yeah, God's words translation, sex. Okay, because it's very explicit on what is being discussed here. Um, so he, if a person marries a woman, he actively still needs to feed, clothe, and have sex with her. Have, and that's discussing polygamy. So God's, God's punishment... For people who are discussing polygamy, oh man, polygamy God against God's word. Uh, the punishment for a man who is polygamous is to continue having sex with his first wife, feed her, and clothe her. Oh man, what a punishment. The problem of a lot of uh, contracts in the first century, or even what was being discussed with Jesus Christ in Matthew 19, uh, with the Pharisees is serial monogamy. People would put away their old wife, not even divorce them, stop providing for her, and if she would go out there with not being given that writ of divorce, then that would cause them to commit adultery because adultery is a woman in wedlock um, having sex with a man not her husband or a man having sex with a woman that's another man's wife. Uh, and that's the only case of what adultery is. It's not... A married man having sex with a non-married woman okay that would be polygamy as we just discovered here in 2110 as we also discussed earlier the punishment for people having sex outside of marriage is getting married so you know if he takes another wife okay but more distilling down to what we're discussing in first corinthians 7 the rights here of food clothing and sex that's or marital rights in uh the uh, New Testament, though it would also be conjugal rights, sex, or sexual rights, because it's very explicit in both the in, uh, Greek and Hebrew. Um, marital rights being something more of a euphemism as opposed to just explicitly saying have sex with her. You know what I mean? Um, uh, so, but the Hebrew is just like sex. It's explicitly sexual. So, when we discuss marital rights in 1 Corinthians 7, um, he, Paul is discussing to avoid sexual morality, each person should have their own wife or their own husband as opposed to someone else's wife or someone else's husband, you know what I mean? Which is clearly um, discussed in uh, uh, two chapters earlier in 1 Corinthians 5, a, a son taking a father's uh, wife which is completely against the law in Leviticus, um, and obviously abhorrent, and what and what he, Paul is basing on making it being abhorrent is the law in Leviticus, which people are like, oh, Leviticus done away with. Well, what about the incest laws? It's not in the Ten Commandments. It's not. It's like it's there in Leviticus. When we discuss this, it's it's a clear reference to the Old Testament, and then Paul later on in First uh, Corinthians seven discusses the. Um, earthly duties of a of a husband and how he has to you know take care of that as well as the things in his life and that's discussing the food and clothing um, and this is all reflected in second temple period which is a long period in uh, BC, uh, you know several hundred years bc into the um 70 a.d when the temple was destroyed uh greek hebrew contracts which discuss the food, clothing, and marital rights, as opposed to, you know, other just Greek contracts, which is more, and Roman contracts, in fact, which were more uh, discussing the expectation of when you divorce, as opposed to the Greek, Hebrew, and later on Christian marriage contracts of the even second and third century, discussing these three rights and... Um, explicitly and the expectation of the end of the marriage or the, the, the solution of a marriage at death when 
this person dies, when the husband dies. Um, it uses usually what's in the contract. Um, uh, and that has to do with like property. And of course, if the property of the wife will go right to the husband. If the wife dies, you don't even have to discuss that. But if if the man dies, well, then my estate will take care of you, you know, after I die. You know what I mean? So these are things that are are, are, are completely integral to the culture. It's in, you know, surviving extent um, Greek Hebrew marriage contracts um uh, uh you know several centuries uh, bc to several cent uh, sec first century ad uh and into once again the second and third century when we have a nascent church so-called christian church and the still not judaism as we see it today church where it was still porous there was christians and um jews so-called uh, Yahudim going to uh, synagogues together um, and trying to, you know, there was a lot of talk of, you know, the Messiah and also learning of the law, which is what the first believers were still, you know, they were still expected to learn the law and sin and the Old Testament and even memorize passages. Um, three years, in fact, it would take to for a convert to be fully converted in uh, many of the early church writings um and discussions of like how uh it all worked and it, even even like we see oh people baptizing other people in the early church people were supervised by already established believers to self immerse in water they would baptize themselves they're they, it's 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 your own your you are doing this it's your own um direct claim to allegiance to the father all so it was all oriented toward self accountability one self taking responsibility for not only their allegiance but for their actions this is reflecting what home math is talking about in terms of what person should do in the relationship because a relationship is a microcosm of your relationship with uh, reality and re society and your relationship with god okay a lot of people who see their relationship like this see their relationship with god as god is this transactional genie you just ask god for whatever you want and then you get it what are you supposed to be doing for god and a lot of people will just dumb it down dumb it down dumb it down over centuries and get it to well i'm just supposed to believe in my mind something and it's like more than just your mind. It's a it's a heart. It's a choice in your mind. Um, and uh, God has final judgment on all men. Okay, we don't say, oh well, once I'm saved, I'm always saved. But there are a lot of people that do say that. Um, and then they'll move the goalposts and say, well, they people who fall away were never saved in the first place. And now now we're now we're just. Oh, so everything is actually, you can't tell anything. Everything is just subjective. Well, it's post, it's postmodern. Okay. And it's a modern belief. Go figure. Um, pulling this back. Once again, we're talking about relationships, relationship with God. You know what I mean? The holy nation of Israel is the bride which is the church, is the bride of Yah, right? We're bringing this back. There are things that God expects us, his nation, to do. That's what the whole Old Testament's about. It's them not doing it and God condemning them for it, calling them adulterous, whores, and things. Read Ezekiel 23. Read throughout the Old Testament. Read Hosea. I mean, like the whole book of Hosea is like, explaining how god feels all the time okay um we we see that there are duties uh and there's authority uh, what are the duties of a woman according to first peter 3 verse 1 and 2 her duty is to submit to their husband 
Now, the reason I wanted to get to this topic here uh, specifically is because a lot of women are not submissive today. They actually see submission as slavery. Using the word submission, it will actually trigger most women into not wanting to continue the conversation any longer. This is a problem. Why is this a problem? Because the conversation needs to be participated in by mo both... Oh, I've got an alarm coming off here. Mayim, time to drink water. Mayim, water in Hebrew. Um, lost myself there. The problem is because women need to be listening to this and it actually drives them away. It drives the modern woman away. Even if they can, are so-called Christian, it's, uh, it will drive them away when we talk about submission. It literally says, submit to your husband in everything. Is that some things? Is that uh, everything? Unless he's telling you to... Uh, forsake God or um, commit adultery or things of that nature you, you don't need to follow, but in everything you need to follow him. Okay? The only things you, you, and you need a specific set of standards, aka the Torah, why Torah matters, to elucidate those things. Because then women will be like, well, well, I don't, I, I, this makes me feel icky and there, and therefore it dishonors me. No, no, you don't get to decide those things. Okay. It's not my body, my choice. That is completely unscriptural. Your body belongs to your husband. Let's find that scripture. They will say that, uh, the my body, my choice. It's actually 1 Corinthians 7, once again. Um, 1 Corinthians 7, 4. The wife does not have authority over her but her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. This is all we're talking about how we have sexual rights to one another. Okay, We don't get to make up the lines, though, on what is sexually appropriate or not appropriate. Oh, well, some uh, I think that oral is sexually inappropriate. Okay, where does the Bible say that oral is inappropriate? It doesn't say it anywhere. Where does the Bible say um, doggy style sexual relations is uh, inappropriate? Oh, but I don't like it. It makes me feel icky when we do it with, uh, doggy style. And you can parse that out to a lot of things that people will say, oh, well, this is wrong and not something that i really want to discuss today but you can go to um biblical roles right biblical roles i believe it's called at at biblical gender roles on uh instagram and you can check out their recent posts uh on the subject literally talking about the subject like oh well i'm i, I as the wife i get to decide what makes me feel it can no you have a duty to submit to your husband Okay, that's what it's like. The husband is called to love his wife. You lo like you love a child. If you love a child, that doesn't mean you spoil them rotten and then make them a bad child. It comes with both correction and provision. It comes with both pleasure and boundaries. It comes with both duty and receive like receiving giving and receiving it's both duty and something that you need to want to do if you really want to be a part of a biblical marriage and um women will all submit to a right man submit to a godly man no it says literally in first peter it doesn't matter if he's an unbeliever you're supposed to still submit to him unless like like i said the ca caveat being it literally tells you to break the law of god stop believing in god if this ungodly man says stop building and everything else though in everything submit to your husband even if he's an unbeliever because through your actions you may convert this guy convert your husband it doesn't say leave it also says in first corinthians going to first corinthians back and forth we're going back and forth because this is two main places where you can see a lot of the um biblical roles okay and it, it seems that even though it's in the New Testament, I'm, and uh, it's clear, 
a lot of modern Christian women don't even understand that. Like they'll say that he'll submit, and they're like, "Oh man, misogynist!" It's 2024. It's 2024. What am I supposed to submit to? Submit to what? Submit to your husband, like the Bible says. He is your head. He is your lead. He's not supposed to be going around and running after his own arms and legs without them you know what i mean rolling on the ground i don't even know how you would do that the head and the body are one you're going and the head leads some people say oh well then the woman's the neck cut off the head of the man and let the neck do something oh wait it can't because it's completely useless without the head the head is the leader the man is the authority the man is the covering this is the biblical pattern and there's plenty of places where you can go and look about uh, look up more on these um uh discussions um and i would recommend that you do of course uh so we've discussed what women are not doing right we've discussed what the bible discusses that they should do uh but we're discussing how women are nothing like that right with modern women are not they want to be independent. They want to be doing their own thing. They don't want to submit. They want to live in the world. They want worldly things. They want a transactional relationship. They do not want, think, as Homath put it, what they are supposed to be doing. There is a level of being of service in the, the, the real faith of the Bible, being of service. And this begins in the Hebraic culture. You want to be, uh, Paul calls himself the bond servant of Christ, okay? there There's many parables of being the good servant, serving the master, and so on and so forth. Service. God serves us. A husband serves his wife as much as his wife serves him. There's a lot going on, and it's not just one way. But the, the, the problem is modern women in society see it the opposite way. So we've discussed how that is completely at odds. The Bible, modern society, two different ends of the spectrum. Um, they might have levels of it. They may have the, the the there might be levels in between, right? There may be um, things that seem like oh that's traditional, but it's only traditional if you only take in like modern era traditional you know what i mean oh oh i take her out and i buy her gifts and this that the other thing you know what i mean before that it wasn't that it was quick it was it was a short courtship you met the family you maybe you went maybe had a chaperone on on go on dates you had, were definitely supervised otherwise um you um got to know them and then maybe there was writing letters and stuff and then you're married it's a short it's a short process. And people in movies and all these things, they, they may try to elongate it as, as I've spoken to about in other videos recently. But that's not how that actually went. We can also discuss what uh, Homath uh, was talking about when he said how, how you show up, which is talking about appearance, of course. Uh, how you show up. You know what I mean? Appearance. I think that could be its own video. Um... You know, there's so many misconceptions of modern men like who are also becoming soft and weak too, where they won't like a, a, a muscular woman. But you know what I mean? There's even episodes making fun of it, of how it's kind of hot at the same time on Family Guy. Um, it's like the new addiction of like a lot of people because in, in, appearance is important. Appearance is like a good portion of what you get in the end and how you show up, which is also includes... Um, attitude your your um your preparation for what you're showing up for and uh so on and so forth so um that that might be its own video needless to say it's something that christian women because feminism lives in, is most rampant in the modern christian church that's where um, we see the most of feminism today. And unfortunately, that's a problem. Uh, and so, and when, when you put feminism out there, it's, that's what the body positivity, uh, bullshit. And you have, um, women, you know, oh, you can't 
tell your wife anything and you know oh she's just uh, she's trying and you know there's a lot of like guilt and you like but what happened to staying in shape and being uh, she, she holds her arm up and shows the strength of her arm like it's like what, what come on guys you know what i mean like there's both there's there's obviously problems from all sides of here with like weak men that don't want strong wives obviously because they're weak too and they can't control a weak wife and uh you know that's smart in some ways but you shouldn't be weak you know what i mean a lot of men are just justifying their weakness uh in more ways than just physical but also emotional and their inability to control their wives and their in their marriage but that also is also predicated on the part that the woman wants to submit and the woman wants to be a wife, which we've discussed many times on this channel. Women don't want to be brides. I mean, women don't want to be wives. They want to be brides. They want to be mothers. They want to be brides. But they don't want to be wives. And it's pretty much encapsulated in what Homath was talking about, but it's worth talking about again. Um, we're just we're touching once again. We're just touching on all the things that we've covered so far and kind of developing um, and connecting the other points that Homath made. I just wanted to touch really shortly on showing up right um, and looking right and um, coming uh, at things in a different way that people are not coming at it because they are blinded by Babylon. I wanted to actually end off and not make this video too much longer because we're already probably at the, uh, you know, 50 minute mark or something like that when I edit this all together. Right. Um, so uh, I wanted to end off the problem of who you surround yourself with and how that is also an issue, uh, that's holding back the modern biblical relationships, even ones that could be considered, um, biblically based as, you know, as loosely as I could possibly use that, they are still being like anchored and pulled down by the people that are surrounding them, the people that they associate with, and they let that affect their mind. We talked about, you know, before, you know, movies and everything and whatever affecting, you know, what people consume or rather, you know, affecting people. And that's what, you know, hanging out with anybody is the same thing. Letting their, their thoughts be your thoughts. You have to, um, especially with women, I mean, men are like this too, but especially with women, because women are socially pliable and they, that is, they adhere to the basically the majority as a and some people say an evolutionary safety mechanism i say that uh it's just uh, a mechanism god put into place where you know they want he wants god god knows what women need to, to survive and obviously there's um his instructions torah to help people navigate that way with the hardware that he's given he's giving you software the torah um but when you have people around you that are not for marriage or not for you or don't have that traditional value you end up um having their software their adware their malware installed in your mind and now you are fighting a battle that you shouldn't have to fight and that you probably don't even know that you're fighting so uh, with that said, I want to intro and segue into the other video I want to splice in. I've been married like five or six years and he found out his wife had a to-go bag, like with cash, all this stuff and found out she had a to-go bag. And she's like, well, just in case, just in like, case of I what? don't know, like, I don't know. Pe like people can turn out to be crazy. And he's like, what are we talking about? And like, he was like. I'm so confused. Like, have I ever given you a reason to have it to go back? She's like, no. Come to find out, she she hangs around all these divorced women who are all like, hey, you should have this just in case he's probably going to cheat on you. Because this is what happened this to is, me, so it's probably going to happen to you. Yeah, and so they scared her into having it to yeah. go back. Now he's all pissed off. The wife was just like, no, I'm not, not going to have it. I will keep my to go bag because you never know. Yeah. And then it's just a level of trust there perfect example of how important your circle is and the circle of friends that you have so i don't have necessarily have a problem with to go bags but not for that reason to go bags because you need to be ready to get out of the babylon when the time comes um or to go back if there's a, a, a emergency or something like that 
but uh, you do not need a to-go bag because you go, I need to leave my husband all of a sudden. Like, it is so melodramatic of how women see marriage today. They all think it's going to be the color purple. They all think it's going to be, like, physical beatings for ridiculous shit and um, uh, uh, gaslighting and cheating. And it's... It, it, that is not what most marriages, uh, and I'm not even uh, for like monogamy only. I'm a poly, uh, I'm a polygamous practitioner. Um, but even among monogamous men, that's not what they. That's not what this is going to be like. Uh, I think that women have a ridiculous expectation of what marriage is uh because they have this um doll like almost victorian age idea of what relationships could be because they read all these old books and movies which all are trying to appeal to some victoria era-esque chivalry which is absolutely one way oriented that is toward women which is back right back to the how everything is trans transactionally uh, meshed so that when you go to actually court people today which people call dating which is completely unbiblical and untraditional they can make it transactional you know what i'm saying where it's it, it, it's without even thinking about it what do you give me what do i get this that the other thing and as long as this person provides this and this is even being done by uh, people talking in like Fresh and Fit and um, other parts of the red pill sphere and how even women talk. They're like, if he's not doing X, Y, Z, gone. Oh, he, if he doesn't add to your happiness, if he doesn't, if he doesn't bring you peace, you're supposed to bring the peace. What the f I, Like, a man is... We have a completely moved away from the biblical foundation. And not but you know people still trying to do their best will still be brought down in a five six year marriage did, did i say at the beginning of that video um i think so it, it, it's it's a long time and th there's no reason to think that way according to the attestation or account of the man and it's like i'm still going to keep the bag just in case think about how ridiculous that is Think about how bitter and like how re like secretly resentful of men she is. Secret. Uh, think about whole uh, what she's holding inside. Think about what that does to other relationships, including that most important one here on Earth with her husband, and then what then she thinks about her relationship with God, and how she thinks that there's a disconnect with how we're supposed to be treating husbands with what like i like what it, you're supposed to be thinking about serving and be this is and this is the problem it is it, men are not afraid of going all in men are not afraid of going all in you see men are gamblers men are taking risks though some risks are more calculated than others you can't help but take some of those risks which involve going all in and men are still going all in in like modern day fucking um uh governmental you know take half of all my shit if we get fucked up um and i take the kids modern marriage men are still going all in on it men are not afraid to go all in it's women are afraid to go all in 80 percent of divorces are women leaving um and uh, as psychologists have put it uh, as jordan peterson women are more neurotic and apt to cord negative emotions so they're more likely to lose romantic interest more than men and then women are like oh then why do women, men have sex with uh, other women why do why are so many men cheat uh, because they have a thing called a penis. And what uh, that makes you do is want to have sex with women. 
and it's pretty simple. Women who do testosterone in bodybuilding, they take a, a minute amount compared to what men take and have in their body innately just by by nature. And they're like, wow, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, whoa. I mean, w women don't have any idea of what it's like. They have, they, 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 they think they get horny and they're like, oh, I'm like a man. I, I, I get horny too. They have no idea. I won't deny that women also get horny. I've ta talked about it in these other videos. And I've also had um, discussions on the topic of making sure that w the marital duty is to please your um, spouse. That's both ways. And for some reason, there doesn't seem to be a lot of discussion on that because, it, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's we shouldn't talk about that. That's unclean. Who said that it was unclean? God told us to go be fruitful and multiply. Why would he not want us to be... All right, we won't even discuss it, I guess. Things like this become a bit of an issue when we have um, uh, a moderate amount of women in the church who are single, alone, no covering, and they're aging in a large population of the uh, of the of America will be of women like almost half as it already has happened in the UK will be oh, 30 and childless um and the mothers that we do get are usually younger and uh impoverished and uh uh not of the culture that we want to pr propagate, but rather of a of a broken, fallen culture that is multiplying at a at a exponential speed, while any traditional ideas are literally destroyed, whether it be by statue or doctrine or teaching in school, and the literal population uh, is bec is not replacing itself, and so we're importing. Uh, migrants and it looks like we have a good population growth but it's not so <clears throat> things like this we can't even discuss because one side is always in in the political spectrum is always gaslighting the other side um the side that it would be of this conservative side can't even agree um and um you know, they get married late, they don't have children, especially intelligent people. That's what the whole uh, thing with uh, uh, Idiocracy, that movie, is all about. Um, who's multiplying. And there's a level of we need to multiply, but how does one do that if you can't even keep most marriages together past five years? Um and a large issue in this a large issue in this system of problems is the people you surround yourself with that finally brings me back to the torah the torah is predicated on the idea that the law that is being given to the people is being applied to a people living in communion, in community, in, in, in a, a community of people, an assembly, an ecclesia, a, a kahal in, in Hebrew, ecclesia in Greek, um, church sometimes in English. These churches are supposed to be communities, not just a standalone building that you go to one time a week. It's something that you're involved with, but it's but it, but it's more than just being involved. With. You're literally living physically near. You're creating a community around. Okay, you're if you can create a community, you can have your own governance. They have there's a there's a small town in, in in florida called miracle village full of sex offenders they have their own town how can they do it and christians don't oh wait they do but they're hardcore when they do it there's the quakers there's the amish or the amish i like amish but amish the mennonites the mormons the jehovah's witnesses to some degree um am i missing any am i missing any and 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 the seventh day adventists to some degree but that's more of like a social community and the pressure but it's not so much like the physical community because they're just like a lot of other churches where everybody's dispersed and then they come together there but is that really how things should be working are you really at safe without your brothers and sisters of your community 
um, there's a story of this guy who had invented this um, cooling heat solution that would, because it boils at negative 40, de 40 degrees, um, it was like creating a large, it was a, a large boon to like alternative energy creation. And this, uh, the state of California fucking threw him in jail for fraud and took all of his equipment, which he then proceeded to prove worked in court, which then led to the um, um, dismissal of all charges. So, uh, you know, could would that happen if there was a community around them that said, no, you can't come here? when uh the I, f I forget i think it was the klotskis i forget the name of the the family it was a, a mick family one of the mix uh over there on the border uh, am i allowed to say that or is that is that is is that going to be censored by 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 uh youtube one of them in the clocks mc i don't I, i'm not i don't mean to sound anyway uh, one of the mix over there on the border uh they were fighting a family was fighting against domain in imminent domain and they stood off with the uh, FBI and they um with guns for a long period of time and that ended up uh leading to the them winning and winning in a court case and then and then them saying okay well then we won't do it here because they said no uh there are other times in, uh, that I can bring up uh, which I've uh, discussed on this channel where there was a community that came from Chicago went to Arizona I believe was the state it might have been Oklahoma um and uh they got in trouble at the uh local school like they went there after their kids had been sent home and then they got a fight there and then they stole like two cars and then they drove them back to their community and their community which was a walled small community put cars in front of the entrance and the police couldn't get them. I mean, they're, I mean, I'm not saying steal cars and get in fights with people. I'm saying if they can do it for illegitimate reasons and Mormons and everyone else can have these communities and, uh, it would give protection to people who were developing things like that. And, you know, there was a, here's another one. There was a woman whose husband had died, I believe, or was very sick. And they were, had a small turbine that was like the size of a flagpole on their property on one of the Great Lakes. And um, the uh, local government like sued them and made them take it down and all this garbage and, he, and, the, and the guy couldn't take it down because he had fallen sick or he had died and um why it was, it was just it was just a small turbine and it was a just alternative power and it's because the people of the land want to control you and you could live your own life and be non-combative with people and just do your own thing like the mormons and jehovah's witness do and even muslims have their own communities now and now the chinese are buying fucking land here and farms and mil billionaires can buy farmland and billions and billions of acres uh, millions and millions of acres and if they can all do it people should band together and do it here and this is what this whole channel is actually trying to build up to if you're watching so thank you for supporting if you do if you want to be a part of it there's links in the subscribe star below to be a part of the community of trying to getting this together it's obviously not going to be easy and it's going to require a lot of sacrifice and that's not something that a lot of modern people are willing to do people don't want to sacrifice and guess what that's the whole problem of modern relationships too people don't want to sacrifice their their lollipops and their fancy pants and they want to keep doing all their single shit they want to keep their single friends they want to keep their single mindset they want to keep their fears from their previous relationships which you shouldn't be accruing because you shouldn't be dating you should be courting and getting married and then having a permanent marriage instead we're accruing all this fucking scar tissue on our hearts and on our minds that we carry forward that you have to oh now i'm gonna put it on the other person and now i'm gonna do this and now we got it's it's all unbiblical all right, and it's supposed to be this way, and people have been scoffing it for the last, like, I don't know, since uh, the entire time I've been alive. But now people are like, hmm, 
maybe there was something to this. Maybe there's something about getting married young and, 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 and having shame in the culture and having serious standards that we follow and having gatekeepers and gatekeeping our belief and not just saying, oh, well, because you say you believe, then we all just say, oh, who is so good as you, 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 you believe while continuing to have an active OnlyFans, which is another video I just recently did. And it's something that people don't want to discuss. Um, and you know what? I haven't uploaded it. I need to upload it. It's on. It's on Instagram, guys. Instagram below here in the in the, in the description. If you guys don't follow me, so that's that's my my little rant here uh, and discussion of like biblical roles. That there, there's you can go to a lot of places, honestly, to see good material on this i like i said biblical gender roles um though i disagree with a lot of what um traditional house tradition tradition traditional tr traditional transformed transformed wife transformed life i disagree with a lot of her stuff um hebrew roots got some good stuff hebrew israelites got some stuff but eventually you gotta biblical gender roles has got it the best because it's a it's a it's a dude who's doing it by uh, scripture and not by emotions or social norms but rather what the bible says um there's a lot of and has been a lot of discussion about the umbrella of um hus uh, god and then husband and then wife and then children uh, each umbrella kind of being a little bit bigger than the one below them and that kind of being a visual to represent the authority of marriage and stuff like that but it it, it seems today that all you see is violence and mo movies and sex on tv but where are those good old-fashioned values I want to be used to rely. no but seriously though where are those it's not on tv but that's what people consume it's not in the church because it's so effeminate and it doesn't have the boundaries of telling women to get married. It says, oh, yeah, you can be single as long as you want. Be single for the rest of your life. Wait. Just wait until God gives you. It's okay to wait. We've I've made so many videos on that, on this channel. Just look them up. Just scroll down. It's all there. It's all about account. Oh, I'm going to wait until I'm older. Oh, I'm a reborn virgin. It's it's uh, I'm Oh, I'm valuable even though I've had three baby daddies uh, and four children. It's 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 all insane things that repeatedly happen, and is being absolutely just like you're just allowed whatever. No, we can't even shame. Oh, women are definitely against the shame unless they're shaming you, man, or Christian or whatever. Because you, oh, you believe that? Well, shame, insults, guilt need to be right, as as a, doc, a Kevin Samuels used to say. It happens all the time. And unfortunately, um, the departure from biblical roles... And once again, I, I'm not appealing to everything Kevin Samuel says either. Just like I don't appeal everything to that Fresh and Fit says. Okay, uh, Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. But they did do say things that are true... And they're trying, and, and and the truth is there if you want to see it. And the scripture is there if you want to read it. And it's, and it's a, uh, in a plethora of places if you actually look for it. From a, and the source is right there in the Bible if you want to read it yourself and not if you want to do all the legwork yourself. But it's plain to see that there is an authority of man over the wife and that there is a um, submissive role of the woman and the woman is supposed to act a certain way and that's not what we're getting today in women. And that's why there's not as much marriage and that's why marriage is ending. And, and because we've given um, the authority of women to divorce, now the women who... Um, are prone to negative emotion and falling out of romantic love, which is just Roman ideology. Love is an action. It's a choice that you do every day of following the rules and honoring and duty. But if you have romantic romance love, well, that's how I feel. And I, there's these tingles between my legs and in my heart and in my in my nose. And, uh, you know, I, I fall out of romantic love because it's not... Every, he's not the super spy, millionaire, tattooed, but her mother loves him, uh, uh, badass with a heart of gold, who is aloof but always there when she needs him and emotionally available but also stoic and a rock and it's just the most fun but and maybe he was all those things but i just don't fuck with her his humor 
And I literally posted a, a video like that the other day where that's literally how women talk themselves out of a relationship. People, women talk themselves out of relationships and people got to understand that the, the, we need to come back to the biblical rules. We need to come back to the Torah. This is why Torah matters. Um, and uh, I hope that one day people will see what's necessary in terms of see what's necessary in terms of building an actual community and a culture going forward it's not it's not trying to fix what's babylonian it's going back to the word and that's why torah matters i also talk about the new testament a lot because the new testament also matters but that's all built on the basis of what is in the torah authority of the husband the um co the ideas of covenants and the idea of the health mate of the woman is supposed to be a help mate okay and the man is supposed to be the 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 leader it's 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 over and over and it's if there if you want to see it but a lot of people don't and so that's the problem. So thank you for watching. I think uh, I think I think that's everything. Did I miss every anything? And you know, I guess to for one more second to just indulge uh, in, in indulge in this moment and um, expound on the solutions. Obviously, going back to the Torah, reading these things, right? But ultimately, going to the Word, getting these standards, and understanding that we need to go to uh, the authority of our fathers, our brothers, our uncles, the men in our life to vet the men that are going to be in your life. Okay, Men understand men. Men will know what's up, especially if there's multiple people. Multiple um, people will be a better... Um, data pool you know what i'm saying because ultimately your father should have the final say in who you marry but you should will have a say as well it's just like he can say he can veto he can veto but obviously you can lobby for him be like come on i love him and you know what I, mean? I love him but you, you you know and that can happen over a period of time and he can soft his heart and you can pray to god but he has the ult ultimate say on, on as your authority because he's passing his responsibility off to this man and so he understands what that means. Um, and women need to understand that. Women need to understand how that men will, women, wa women want to be, are, women are fooled by their ears. They want to be lied to. But men will tell on themselves. Women will tell on themselves. People tell on themselves if you talk to them long enough and ask them the right question. And listen. And you just listen. Um, and uh, men are aware of this. Uh, and uh, if you, they're not, you can tell them. And then you can have them interview your potential suitor. Uh, and it should be one at a time. And it should be short courting. We should stop dating and go to courting once again, which is a shorter process, and get married. And that being a, a, a choice that you make every day and you continue to honor. Not only honor to yourself, but to God and um, to your children, your family, and what you are supposed to do. It's not about self anymore. You're taking up a duty, and it's not just for you. It's A marriage is not supposed to serve you. And that's unfortunately what a lot of modern people think. So um, I think we've talked about this subject long enough right now. I think we've I've covered everything. Um, yeah, so... Um, all right, so I we've thoroughly thoroughly discussed this subject. Um, uh, well, I won't say we just thoroughly discussed the scriptures, but we thoroughly discussed the topic and enough at least for you to go and investigate the scriptures more. Look for other commentaries. Look for other. Um, teachers, if you want to listen to teachers, read it yourself, especially, and come to your own conclusions. Pray for the Holy Spirit to to in in uh, inspire your your ears and um, 
have you hear what is trying to be said. Um, I thank everyone for watching. I'm going to be making, obviously, more of these videos. I've gotten enough into this topic, I think, for people to think about and come comment below. Let's discuss this. Um, stay up. Stay locked and loaded. Stay vigilant. Shalom, shalom. Peace.